Student Activity Account Discussion. Right. <clears throat> Student Activity Account Discussion. Uh, Mr. O'Brien contacted the office with a letter following the rules of policy requesting to be placed on the agenda so that um, I the fourth, fourth part discussion would like to take place on the activities. And I believe that the letter came to board packet from Mr. O'Brien uh, requesting the discussion. So I'm going to turn it over to Mr. O'Brien at this point so that we can uh, bring forth the issues as to what you'd like to discuss. <coughs> okay. Vicki, can I have a floor? Yes, yes. Mike, are you still with us? Okay. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> okay, uh, I have four topics of discussion. The first being, uh, why are the warrants of the activity account not made available to the public sitting in this room like the other warrants for the district? Can that be answered? Why, why is that not made available to the public? Well, I, there's an, actually not, no reason that they can't be. Okay, the, the last meeting when I requested them, I was told I was going to have to pay for them. Uh, I was willing to pay. I think I got yours, Vicki, thanks. But uh, they're district warrants. They should be available. I'm, I'm hoping that they will be. Yeah, it's just, uh, again, always in the past, the bills warrants have always been provided as a courtesy. The district's have always been provided. The student activities have not. There's been no reason for it. It's just, it's just what has been done in the past. And again, those are a courtesy. It has just always been done. So that's it. And you understand, Kevin, that we, you know, in, in the last year we've changed software to where we were able to have come up with with these student activity reports that are much more like our warrant list. And so there, we could make sure that those particular warrants are on the table with the other warrants. Good. That would be a problem. Okay. Uh, moving on to the second part of this. And there's four. Uh, district warrants paid by the student activity fund. And Mike, I believe you questioned a warrant in the last meeting about postage. Okay. Uh, the student activity fund paid postage for the Falcon View, I believe, was that correct? I can answer that. Yeah, we can, we can answer that question. We can answer that question. Um, as you're aware, when you were on the board also, Mr. O'Brien, um, we pay the Falcon View out of the student activity account because we don't know what that postage is going to come to. Hey, John. So, John, I'm, I'm addressing the board here. And I'm not aware of a lot of things about the ex student, student activity account when I was on the board. That's why I'm asking the board now. So, Vicki, is it right to pay district warrants out of the student activity account? I'm going to have to refer that to Mr. McKee. Okay. okay. Is it yes or no? So, it's not as simple as a yes or no question. It's Ad, you were aware. You've been explained. You've been trained as a board member. You know this, Kevin. And, you know, to sit there and... Hold it, John. You're personalizing this. I want a yes or no. No, for you to sit there and pretend you don't know is is just not right. Okay, Mike, are you so listening in? What, what I'm saying to you is the, the postage for the Falcon, which we have always taken out of activity account, that's a check which we're able to cut right now out of the district office to pay for that postage. Then the district takes general fund monies and reimburses that activity account at the next meeting. And that's a practice which we've done forever. And that's just a, a management part of the business so that we can actually take care of that piece of business without having to hold up the Falcon View. Waiting so, for the next John, meeting. you're saying that the district can pay warrants from the activity fund, for the, the, the for activity this, fund can pay for district warrants. this one, we have been doing that. That's been the practice. Okay. Uh, the third part of this would be non-student funds in the account. Uh, what does the in and out part of this activity account consist of? What monies? I'll refer that to Julie. Um, the in and out account basically at this point just does things for one-time uses we don't start an account for a classroom doing one project they want to get a bunch of money um, maybe for a field trip although we do have field trips so that's a bad example but if somebody's going to do a one-time activity 
we have them put it into the in and out account and then it turns around with the PO and gets taken right out. And that's what the in and out is for. Okay, it's so the, one -time the in and out on, in this account is huge. It is, and I would, have to, I would have to look into how that money got in there because as far as I don't know, we don't bring in any money from that. Do we, we, do we take gate receipts from games and put it no, in there? No, not how, at all. How about they the only fees? Go into active, only in the activity receipts do the gate fees go to. And that's general fund? No, that's activity receipts in the student activity account. So gate monies go into the student activity fund? The activity receipts, yes. But they go into this fund we're yes. talking about? Yes. Okay, how about uh, fees charged to parents of athletes? Yes. Do those fees go into that fund? Yes, they do. Aren't those like, shouldn't that be reimbursed to the district? I mean, the, the district owns those, the facilities. Those funds are turned around and then they, they, they zero out the cost of the athletic teams during the year. Okay, well, point to the board. The district owns this, the facilities. The district should be reimbursed for gate fees for the use of their facilities. And any, any fees incurred for kids to play sports that are mandated by parents. Those should not go into the student activity fund. It's not the student's money. In response to that? Yeah. Um, what you are requesting the district to do is to take a large chunk of its general fund monies and to budget it towards taking care of athletics and then at the end of the year reimbursing all that back. And so we operate the way that we do right now so that we do not have to do that. But I'm just saying that that, that money isn't the student's money. It's the district. I'm, I'm, and maybe I'm wrong, but I have the Montana Code for extracurricular funds for pupil function, which is what this fund is. Can I just clarify, we're talking about the um, activity receipts account, or we're talking about the in and out account? I think at this point we're talking about activity okay. receipts, where the gate right. receipts come in right, and thanks. the uh, fees come in. Okay, I wanna, uh, I'll move on to number four. It's the last one I have, and it talks about the five previous audits of this account. Mr. McGee, you, you reiterated four or five times in the Falcon View this past month that this is audited in conjunction with regular other funds. Correct. All right. Uh, Pat? When was the first time you filed warrants for the district activity? Probably the first, my first seated board meeting. Mike, do you recall when you got them? I didn't hear the question. When's the first time you were given a ledger for these student activity fund warrants? I don't recall. Okay. Well, I was a trustee for three years, and I never saw anything in the activity fund. Nothing. And I'm wondering why now they're, they're showing up. And at the request of other trustees, including myself, didn't receive anything as a trustee. So, I want to discuss those five audits. The last five audits. 2010 down to 2006. In the Montana Code, the Superintendent of Public Instruction does allow for activity funds like this to exist in, in bank accounts. An accounting system for the fund recommended by the Superintendent of Public Instruction must be implemented by the trustees. And it must provide for A, the internal, internal control of cash receipts and expenditures of the money. The last five consecutive audits shows significant deficiencies in that area every year. Significant according to the auditor, and I know auditors use mild language. Also, the 2008 audit shows a $63,000 discrepancy from the bank account to what the auditor gave you. $63,000. 
the auditor said you had $63,000 less than the bank, roughly. Did you? That was 2008. I've never not balanced with the former state bank statement ever. Well, I'm confused if we're if we're having things audited, and they're so great, they're really not. And the auditor looks at looks at all of the bank statements and all the. Yeah. So I don't. I'm, not, I'm just confused well, on where that's going. Well, the point is, we've had two different auditors. Yeah. We've had the Paul and both of them. We've had Denning Downing, and they are giving the school district a pretty good clean bill. Okay. Right here. John, that's not true in the audits. If you look at the audits and read through them and come in and have us explain the audits or have our auditor here to explain it, <coughs> you find out that um, what we have is a standard audit that is in compliance. It's a compliance report. It's not an audit. Now, what I'm asking the board to do is take a look at those last consecutive five audits. They're in the office here. You will find the Montana Code broken in the activity account on every one of those. 2008 was also missing approximately 20 some pages on what the board voted on. That was the first Fultz audit. Uh, I'm sorry, the first Denning audit. The Fultz audit, the last one in 07, recommended the district not pay district warrants through the fund. <coughs> and that's, it's illegal to do that. <coughs> So I'm going to ask the board to take a look at those five audits, and I would like this to go on to the next agenda. I want to see an I want to see an internal audit of that account. And if you don't, you know, I want it to go on the agenda as a vote. Thanks. Okay. So is this same? Is this the same request that you have made with others in the state with regard to our stuff? Yeah, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I'm addressing the board. Uh, Kevin, every time I've been here three years, I look the auditor in the eye. I said, is there any funny business? Auditor in the eye. I said, is there any funny business? She says, no, there's no funny business. I can tell if there's funny business. Mel, did you read your last audit? I don't have to read the last lot of Thank you. I, I have to Thanks, tell. Mel. You're welcome. I don't have to read it because I trust the people that are doing the audit. Okay. Well, thanks. You're welcome. I mean, I respect that, Mel. Do I do? Mel, I would suggest if you don't read it, maybe your wife could read it to you. It's very important to read. I the, think you're way out of line. Yeah, that is. Mr. Trevor, you're way out of line. Yeah. 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 Okay, Mr. It's disrespectful Disrespect. to an elected official and they don't deserve to be harassed and intimidated. That is way out of line. And you demonstrate that you're way out of line by your behavior and your sheer existence in this community. Uh, you're out of line. All right. Now, now I've seen this sign. You've got the floor here. I've got the floor. I am the chairman. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Shreve, that was totally disrespectful. We are voted trustees. And I'm asking you to leave this meeting. Under what circumstances, please? Just for what I just said. We're disrupting and being totally disrespectful. No problem. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Paris, I'm sorry. Mr. Brian, yeah, um, this is a question that I just, do um, you understand? Sorry. Yes, that would be great. Sorry, thanks. Um, I just have a question. Um, there was an article written in the Falcon View in, two, in April 2010 which basically the Falcon View this month was very similar to that except for the um, accounts that were listed. In that article, there were 64 accounts, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the auditor's report for that year shows 53 accounts. So why would the auditor get less accounts? And yet I have proof of 108 accounts. So can someone please explain? I know maybe my math may be deficient, but 53 to 64 to 108, something just doesn't seem. Can you please explain that to me? I think there's, that question has been answered before, but I didn't have that over But there's actually um, 121 student activity accounts. And before we switched over to Black Mountain, which has been going for what, two years, two and a half years, um, we had. We had the group of main accounts, and then the in and out account was made up of several others, all the basketball, all the field trips, 
Um, I would have to pull those out to see, but that one in and out account was made up of probably 30 or 40 other ones, and then it rebalanced into the one. So the in and out account at that time kind of was a housing for, I don't know, 30 or 40 other accounts. When we went, and it was just a wording thing when we did Black Mountain, they asked us why do we, why do we have in and out this, in and out that, in and out that, and so there's, again, there's no reason, so we just separated all the accounts, and that okay. was it. Okay, would I be able to ask for, I can give you the sheet or I can email it to you, I have, I think it's 120, uh, 108 I think I said in here, mm -hmm. could you just write down or steaming me back what accounts I'm missing? I'll just, give you, I'll just give you a, a list of all our right accounts. Thank you. You bet. Um, I'm sorry, could I, would you write that down for me? Write it down so I can have it and write you it? Want to email it to you? you want sure. To write it. That's either way, whatever you want to do. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions? We'll move on to out-of-state travel requests. We have uh, two teachers.